All right, so you've been um, at, I guess, large SEO agencies for the past almost decade, right? Yeah, almost. Almost, and you've seen different trends around that. One of the first trends we wanted to talk about was basically the evolving role of SEO organizations, what their place is, and how, and how has that changed? I mean, you, you tell me, I mean, you've been in it. Yeah, well, one of the interesting things I've noticed, a little more anecdotally maybe recently, but the increase in RFPs that are specifically targeting SEO services. Um, those have always existed, but you know, being in a large media agency, you often find that SEO is lumped into the AOR RFP structure. And um, more and more I'm seeing RFPs for AORs and then separate SEO RFPs, which in the spirit of talking about the evolving changes and trends in the industry, maybe that's not a positive one so much because you want to keep everything kind of organized and integrated together. Right. Um, but just sort of an interesting anecdote in, in the space and how, you know, I think what it is, if I had to, you know, observe it and, and guess what's going on, SEO has always been sort of thrown into these media AOR RFPs as, oh, this is a channel that kind of sits with paid search and yeah, I think we need to do this, so let's just have this agency also do this as well. And as particularly with COVID and all the media budget shifting and everything else. It's okay, it should, it should yeah. the mic should work fine, but it's always good to have a truck right, right driving by. Yeah. He's just gonna keep driving around. because This it's is place proprietary to stop. information. I don't know if the, uh, he's, he pay for this premium uh, VIP access? It would be cool if we could use it to like hang you up there somehow and we could do the interview from really a social distance away. Oh yeah, I like that, I like that. That is like a, tr like a crane type of solution. Yeah. So uh, that's, just, that's the big surprise. We are gonna hang you up from <laughs> one of those beams up there and do a really socially distant interview. Right, I'll have to I like drive it. by one more time. This is what makes vlog footage great. <laughs> that's the most exciting thing that happened to my life and since COVID started, so. Thankfully, right? I mean, it could be worse, so. Anyway. Quick and painless. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> so SEO is now seg segmented out as being the evil little sister of marketing. Yeah, and I, I think what's behind that, if, if I were to surmise, is that with COVID and the media budgets moving uh, around and being kind of reprioritized and all of this change in a space that requires so much change and so much uh, information and actual you know, sort of action beyond, you know, the, the programmatic, you know, media side, which you know, I sit with those folks, so I, I'm not diminishing anything they do. Um, but SEO requires, you know, significant investment, significant time, but there's a big reward on, on the back of that. And I think large enterprises are starting to understand a little bit more nuanced the benefits of SEO and how much you can get out of SEO within an organization. And so I think there's more of a focus on it and you know, it's now being pulled out of these AOR pitches to look for specialists in the area who can deliver the best SEO. I think over time, it'll get rolled back in as they understand that a lot of the agencies they were talking to previously do provide those services, um, but the conversations evolved a bit. And I think what's interesting is when you talk about how enterprises are structuring their internal teams, there are more in-house SEOs now that on the other side of the, the calls that we're on um, and they're integrating themselves in new ways. So over the past, you know, seven years or so, seeing SEO groups sit under analytics, sit under social media, sit under the IT team, sit under the marketing team. And, you know, that now I think we're seeing the SEO team sit within marketing and talk to all of the different teams within marketing within the organization about what, what we're doing. Um, and so you're seeing a little bit more of that integrated uh, offering rather than sort of SEO being siloed and sort of the stepchild of the and marketing that's department. You, that's what you want to see. You want to see yes. SEO integrated with the marketing team because these days, especially more than ever, you know, what you do on the paid side might not have a direct influence on SEO side, but it can have an indirect influence on the SEO side through more attention, through more link sharing, through more other areas. What, what, what billboards you put up there, what TV ads you have, all that type of stuff all influences each other. Um, and what efforts you put towards your content around SEO by incorporating all this marketing that you're doing in other areas all helps the overall picture. 
Absolutely. And it goes both ways, right? The SEO work that we do really benefits a lot of the media that's being bought. And you can measure that in more interesting ways now than I think we've been able to in the past. Such as? How, how, how do you measure that now? So we've been testing a lot with you know the MMM models, for example, that, that folks use to try to help prioritize where to put their media dollars. I mean, five, six years ago, no one was ever asking me from the research department, hey, do you have any data that we can put in our MMM model? Um, but we're now thinking about you know new ways of attribution for SEO and, and how it's tying into the media and what are those trigger points. Then when we make a change to the website, did that actually have a benefit for the bottom line of the business of our client? Interesting. Cool. And I assume because of the evolving nature of you know enterprise SEO and stuff like that, you are looking for different types of assets and skill sets in the actual people you hire. So yeah. what, are, what are the different things that have evolved in terms of who you're looking to hire these days versus maybe the older, older days? So one of our recent hires actually built a marketing analytics practice at a previous agency. And you know, at, on the surface, maybe that's not the most obvious fit for you know, an SEO team, but um, what we're finding is the ability to understand analytics, the ability to um, you know, run these types of models or even just speak the language of some of the research teams who are more in the weeds on that work uh, is critically important for showing the value of what we do. Um, we're also looking at a lot of, you know, specialized technical resources because if you think about, um, you know, where companies now are with their SEO programs, as they get more evolved, you're no longer getting clients where the initial baseline audit of, hey, you need to have meta descriptions is going to suffice because everyone's sort of up to that. They've raised the bar. Um, and so now you need to be a little bit more nuanced in all of the work that, you know, Martin's and, and the rest of the, those folks um, have been doing on JavaScript indexing. You know, that requires some really specialized technical understanding of code. Right. Um, and those are skills that are difficult to find in some cases. So, um, so you technical know, SEOs. Technical SEOs, analytics experts, analytics experts, some data scientists, data scientists to understand, you know, natural language and you know semantic understanding, um, and then the broad range of categories that or channels that aren't traditional search. So we look for ecom experts, we look for YouTube experts, we look for experts in podcasting, podcasting exactly. Um, so lots of different channels that we have to keep up on, and, and a lot of those are specialized skill sets. Any link builders, or that's like. Uh, we, so interestingly, we look at link building um, somewhat algorithmically. Um, so, you know, using tools, some that we've built, some that you know, are available third party um, to assess link portfolios and estimate the risk that li exists within them. And the more risk, the more we'll focus on maybe finding some folks who are uh, particularly skilled in that area. Um, the less risk, particularly with the size of the clients that we're working with, Mo usually, um, you know, the, there's a lot of awareness that already exists and a lot of links naturally pointing back to those sites. So it's not as much of a focus for right. a lot of enterprise. I assume most of the, your clients don't really need that much of a link building effort because of, they just have probably tons of links. For the most part. Um, cool. All right. I appreciate this conversation. Could you please tell people in this camera how, you know, who you, again, how they can learn more about you, where they can follow you and stuff like that? Absolutely. Yeah. No, this was great. Uh, great catching up, um, you know, after a bit and, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn for sure. Um, ReprisedDigital.com is the agency website. You can see what we're up to there. Uh, and then all the usual social channels for, for the Reprise as well. I'm a little quieter on the social fronts. You know, I keep myself, uh, I'm boring. I just sit at home and read about search articles. I don't Most of the much. office is working from home, I assume. Yeah. And most of them New York City employees? I mean, they're all over the world, but a lot of, how big is the New York City office? So in New York, we have uh, 34 people, I believe. Um, where, was the, where, was the, where was the actual office? Where in New York City? So we have three. Um, okay. There are a couple. One is uh, around Times Square. Another one is in Herald Square. And another one's sort of downtown. So all the quietest parts of New York City. Okay. I, used to, I used to literally go to people's offices back when that was allowed. Yeah. That was, you know, I went to Mike Rahan's office. was like, I don't know if you know, Empire State Building. The amazing view. I'll probably include that later. A competing firm, but I'm not gonna say who's better. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's. Hopefully, we'll get back to that point. Hopefully, I'll be able to check out your quiet office. Come on down. We're in a mall, so there's plenty uh, plenty to do there. So you don't go in anymore. That's, you haven't been in. No, um, not not yet. But I'm sure we'll be back soon. Awesome. All right. Very much. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Barry. So that was Dan. 
smart guy, interesting guy. Um, been working with him for a long time. Great to see he's doing so well in the SEO industry. It's just funny when things go full circle. Worked with him on a development project. Didn't know anything about SEO. 10 plus years later, now he's an SEO guru working with some of the biggest companies, doing some of the biggest things in SEO that you probably not heard of, but you see behind the scenes. Um, he seems to know exactly what is going on in the space and I'm really looking forward to you enjoying this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and definitely comment below. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.